is there a formula for um, how much insulin to take if you know the grams of protein, the grams of carbohydrate, and the effect of the, the incretin effect of the Chinese restaurant effect that would allow you to um, calculate how much insulin is required for every meal? Um, th this reflects on an error that many people make. It's possibly the most common error that I can see in the treatment of diabetes. It's an error made by insulin pump makers in their uh, in the formulas for how you uh, bolus a meal. Uh, it's made by parents. It's made by diabetics who take insulin. Um, uh, they say to themselves, well, I know that I need this much insulin uh, per ounce of protein. I need this much insulin for uh, six grams of carbohydrate. And um, I can, uh, by trial and error, try to find out how much insulin I need for the Chinese restaurant effect. And the trouble is, when you add all these things together, you don't get something that's predictable. Not only that, you can't easily figure out how much you need for the Chinese restaurant effect. Chinese restaurant effect, is a, uh, which is really now called the incretin effect. I invented the term about 20 years before the incretin effect uh, was named. And uh, we know that nutrients of all kinds cause the intestines to make GLP-1, which in a diabetic causes them to make glucagon, which raises their blood sugar. So, a little bit of fat, a little bit of carbohydrate, a little bit of protein, and mere distension of the intestines will all cause GLP-1 production by the intestines, will all raise blood sugar, and we don't know how much. Uh, the way to find out is to create a meal that makes sense to you, that you like, and uh, you guess at the amount of insulin using the guidelines in my book, but as the book indicates, these are initial guesses as the amount of rapid-acting insulin that you take to cover that meal. And finally, if you do that same meal several times, you'll get to a dose of insulin that works. And then you have to get the timing to work. So you adjust the timing, how long before the meal, before you get that, <clears throat> that to work. And finally, you now have a meal and a dose of insulin, usually regular insulin, not a super rapid acting insulin. And that, that pair uh, is reproducible. But if you're going to then have a totally different meal and think you're going to uh, uh, work with numbers and add them up again and uh, get an answer, you're not. You're going to have to go through the trial and error all over again. So jumping from one meal to another, changing meals every day, which is what's commonly done in the treatment of diabetes, doesn't work. And that's why, that's one of the reasons why people are on these roller coaster blood sugars. They have a, a, a theory that somehow they can uh, make an insulin plan that's going to work no matter what they eat. And uh, it doesn't work. You have to set yourself up for X meals, X precise doses of insulin that go with those meals, yeah. and don't change them. Yeah. And if you get tired of them, then you have to go through the experiment all over again for the new meals. Yeah. And that's it. Well, we have, I mean, we have a handful of meals, but we keep our breakfast. We got a, we got a breakfast that Dave loves, and we stick with it. And breakfast is easy because of what you just said. But dinner and snacks with his, his hunger levels vary. Uh, it's more tricky, and as soon as we we stray from if we eat at a restaurant or if we stray from meals that we have knowledge about 
what you said is exactly right. The unpredictability comes into play, and we have to really be on our toes. That's right. Um, I have one situation where I have uh, an unusual meal. We go to a particular restaurant. Uh, I'll eat no carbohydrate at all, no salad even, and I'll have a... Um, uh, a big bowl of steamed mussels <laughs> and I'll dip the mussels in melted butter uh, and I have by trial and error worked out how much insulin I take for that and uh, uh, I'm able to uh, uh, take it shortly before uh, I start eating and it works out uh, if they delay it uh, uh, well, I usually actually wait until I see the waiter coming in, and then I eat very slowly, and it's all protein and fat, uh, so I can get away with taking the shot almost immediately before the meal. Uh -huh. So uh, uh, that's how I get around my one meal exception. Uh, uh, it's, it's, the game plan isn't easy. But the payoff is horrendous. Uh, I'm 81 years old, and uh, I'm in better shape than anyone I know uh, uh, 10 years younger than myself, who's not diabetic. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe 40 years younger. <laughs> so, uh, it's... Uh, there. Uh, to me, these sacrifices are trivial, but I'm lucky. I was never big on food, so uh, I don't make the sacrifices that some of my patients make. But it's a big payoff. <laughs>